The following is intended for mature audiences only. Discretion is advised. Pillow fight, pillow fight. This is so fun. Oh, pillow fighting. Why is it so fun? Pillow fight. Hey, it's me, Yamini, and you're listening to Pillow Fight. If you want more of us, follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Pillow Fight Pod. If you love us, leave us a review in the Apple Podcast app or wherever you listen to podcasts. We've got an amazing episode in store for you, so buckle up. Thanks so much for listening. Pillow fight, pillow fight. Is yours made of goose? Ooh, we got feathers flying everywhere. Mine's made of goose. Pillow fight, pillow fight. This is so fun. Oh, pillow fighting. Why is it so fun? Pillow fight. Today on Pillow Fight, I'm joined by Mohan Adel Shaiki, a stand-up comedian and writer who has been featured on Conan and Comedy Central and currently works for Full Frontal with Samantha B. You can find more of Mohan on Instagram at Mohanad.elshaiki and on Twitter at Mohanad Shaiki. In this episode, we discuss sex scandals, on and off celebrity relationships, and growing up naive. Fuck. Mary? Kill. Fuck, Mary, kill. Okay, so for Fuck, Mary, kill, the first thing I have is that the trailer for Karen has been making the rounds on social media this week. So the film uh, stars Taryn Manning from Orange is the New Black, and it follows a young Black couple who moves in next door to a white supremacist who makes their lives living hell. Uh, number two is that T-Pain opened up about his mental health in the upcoming Netflix docuseries, This Is Pop. He said that Usher, who was once a close friend that he respected, told him several years ago that he ruined real music with his liberal use of autotune. These comments sent him into a four-year state of depression that he is only now talking about. Um, number three, 26-year-old candidate for New York City Council, Zach Weiner had a private video leaked on Twitter earlier this week featuring a younger Weiner during a BDSM session with the dominatrix. His response was pretty straightforward. He just said the video was a violation of trust, but that he's not ashamed for the private activities that he enjoys doing with his partners. So, fuck, Mary kill, Karen movie, T-Pain admitting that Usher made him depressed, and the Zach Weiner leaked tape, what would you do? Oh, wow. Okay. I feel like the... I feel like two of them I would kill, but I have to pick one. <laughs> uh, I'll I'll definitely I'll definitely feel like I I want to kill the Karen movie mm-hmm. for sure because it it just sucks and I don't like it. And then fucking Mary. I mean, I'm gonna go with Mary for the uh, PDSM guy just because he was like, "Fuck it, that happened," and I do not care. Mm-hmm. So. That was that was good. Uh, so I'm only left with one now. So I'm just gonna go with 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 fuck Usher. But like, as in like, uh, fuck you, Usher, and not have sex with Usher though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would also kill the Karen film. I think it's like definitely one of those things where a bunch of people saw Get Out and are now trying to make another one just like it. But it's like none of them will be Get Out, and this one is just like way too on the nose with the like calling it. Karen and you know it's such a hack concept also like it's just like it it had its time like when everything like would it's I feel like even the word Karen is like losing its its worth now because like so many people are using it and a lot of like white people are using it now so it's just like it's not it's not as fun anymore and to make a whole movie about it it was just like why why are we doing this it's like if someone made a movie about like a tiktok trend or exactly something. yeah a tiktok I also think, trend from like last year too so yeah i like think current, that like yeah. the karen thing they probably started making the movie when it was still a thing that was being yeah like used like that but it definitely didn't like age into the time it would be released which absolutely yeah they could have thought about that you know like they should have been like what what do we think this is going to make sense in i don't know a year from now and of course not, because it was a topical thing. Like, you shouldn't make movies about topical stuff mm-hmm. unless you intend to release them in a week somehow. Yeah. Or, like, years, years, years later. Exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh-huh. Something like, but now it's just, like, it doesn't have, like, it's not, it's not relevant anymore. Also, it's not a great concept. Like, I watched the trailer, and, and it didn't make me go, yes, I want to watch that. Yeah. Did you watch yeah. Orange is the New Black? I did. I did watch it, yeah. 
I just, I also am just, why I feel, I don't know what I feel, but about Taryn Manning being typecast consistently as like a white supremacist. Mm-hmm. Um, I wonder how she feels about that slash like if she specifically goes out for those kinds of parts. I mean, she definitely has the vibe. I get it. I get why they have her as mm-hmm. the person who's playing Karen. But I feel like in from her perspective, she was like, okay, well, a paycheck, especially during a pandemic when nothing was yeah. happening. I don't know if she doesn't if she regrets this now because it just it it just looks bad. I hate it. Yeah. Yeah, I think that also calling it Karen kind of missed the mark on what the movie was about because it seemed like actually brutal and like a horror mm-hmm. movie with like death and Karen just feels like a somewhat like, can I call, can I speak to the manager person? You exactly. Know? And I mean, they have that line too, where like in, in the trailer where she like asks to speak to the manager and it's just like, it's this whole thing is extremely hacked. Like it's not, why are we doing this? Yeah. You know, like, it's just, it's the, like, it, it feels like they took a bunch of tweets and they were like, yeah, that's the script. Hope everyone enjoys it. I feel like a high, it was like a high schooler in a video production class is like concept. Exactly. So, yeah, exactly. But I guess they're just trying to make movies now because it's been a while and like movie theaters are reopening, but I just, I don't know. It, I don't like that. And then um, I think I would marry the like T-Pain thing um not like the usher part just like Mm -hmm. um him opening up about it and like and being honest about he's someone he loved disrespecting him and I feel for him and I feel like I want to be there to help him through the situation and to support him through his mental health journey and then I would fuck the Zach Wiener BDSM tape because I mean it is BDSM so it is like kind of it is sex so i would yeah that. <laughs> that makes sense yeah no yeah i think the t-pain thing was weird too especially i think the part that like struck me the most that when he said that he has the uh, flight attendant to wake him up i'm like you're gonna wake me up just to insult me like that's <laughs> too much yeah yeah it's, yeah yeah i don't know i think like it's a strange thing i don't know what the public sentiment on usher is anymore I, yeah, I don't think the public has anything to say about him, to be honest. I mean, he's just rich now. I don't know if he makes music or does anything that has to do with it. I have no idea what Usher does now. He doesn't act. Yeah, so. I think the last major thing that I remember him doing was, like, bringing Justin Bieber into the forefront. Oh, wow. Okay. Yes, that was, what, 20 years ago? I have no idea. <laughs> I want to say, like, 10 years? A little, a little yeah. more than 10? I don't know how how long has Justin Bieber been famous for because I don't know how old he is. He was started getting famous when I was in like probably fifth or sixth grade, so it'd be like up to like about fifteen years, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't even remember that part about him. So it's just, I think I think the last thing I remember about him is that song that he had with uh, Lil John and like who else? The other guy, Ludacris. I think, right? Yes. Louis that Chris very, was very old song that like, was like, yeah, that was like extremely famous. But other than, like at least Ludacris like went into acting and stuff. Like Usher was just like, yeah, that's it. I hope you remember me from the uh, weird dance moves I've done. I think that like these days as like Twitter becomes a way to leak information about people in public office, I think so much of that is just like, let's show the general public that this person has sex, which I think is like a funny concept. Yeah. I mean, it's, I feel like the way they went about it though, it's just like, but <laughs> I mean, I'm like, that's literally what this guy is into mm-hmm. uh, to be humiliated. And when like, and I'm just like, you, just, you guys just did that. That's just his kink. And yeah. what did you think was going to happen? I mean, maybe they did do that for that and not to, actually hurt his race because he was already like big time losing i think yeah because there's so many people i feel like they were like okay you know what i'm gonna vote for you now just based on this yeah so maybe he leaked it who knows there we talked about i don't know a few episodes ago i talked about how um one of the cheetah girls leaked her own leaked her own nudes in order to get out of disney channel 
So it's, oh. you know, this could be an elevation of that strategy. That's crazy. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know people like just did that, but it makes sense. Cause like what else, what other way can you get out of like a Disney contract? And I'm sure like she can just say like, release me because they're probably like find her or something, but that makes sense yeah. to me. That's so yeah. funny. Which I just think is like a hilarious thing. because she can't break her own contract, but it's like they would break hers. And I wonder if now that would still happen. Yeah, I feel like maybe they'll have like add a clause against it or something. Like if in case this happens, you still also will be fined or something, something like that. Like they're not dumb. They, you know, they, they know how to protect their money. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering if they would end the contracts over that kind of thing now. Because I think that like it's changing oh. a little bit. But I don't know. I mean, I have no idea, really. It's just. Yeah, it is changing, but Disney is just so like uptight about like so many things. So maybe maybe they're cool with it now. I have no yeah. idea, but yeah. I just think like I don't know. I was seeing like Olivia Rodrigo or whatever is like a Disney star right now, and it's mm -hmm. just really different her relationship to the public than any Disney star of my youth. So yeah, I mean, I've I really have uh, no idea anymore because I feel like I have, I'm out of the loop on the Disney thing. Cause, well, I mean, like, not really because, like, they own so many companies now. So I feel like everything is Disney now, even if it doesn't, like, straight up say it's Disney on it. It's just, mm -hmm. like, they own so many companies. So I feel like now they should be more, like, lax when it comes to these things because you're, like, you can't really restrict the content the way you did when it was, like, the Disney channel only. You know, because, like, now you have, like, all of these, like, fan bases. So, you like, you can't just be, like, no, no sex, nothing like this. Uh, still, again, no people of color. I'm, that's the Disney Channel, uh, <laughs> I assume. Uh, but, yeah, I don't know what, it, what it, it is like now. But I'm sure, like, they have, like, restrictions on, like, people. Like, I don't know, what's his name? That guy who, who was, like, I support Palestinians and then came out the next day and was, like, actually, I take it back. Disney um, yelled at me. Was it Mark Ruffalo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 it was like apologizing. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry if I've ever done anything good. <laughs> um, I think it's like also that those kind of scandals, particularly if they're not with minors, um, like drum up excitement for, you know, you get people talking and it's like, that's always a good thing. Like NFL jerseys, Mm -hmm. like peaked in sales around the time when like the protests that were like changing the Redskins and the Cleveland Indians and things like that, those names, like mm. people were buying the dirt used to burn them. And yeah. So yeah. It was like, they're still feeding into that system. And so I think, and I think that's like something that's really tied into social media that they didn't have before. So I think that is definitely maybe why we can have more edgy Disney stars now. But yeah, exactly. Not because they not because they like want them to be liberated, but because it's like good publicity if they Exactly. Do. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they do they know stuff. what the public wants and that's that's it. They'll they'll just give them give them that. I think it's also interesting that people who run for political office uh can't have ever like done anything bad in their lives. Like this is not even bad, this is just sex. But if you were like arrested once at like 18, you can't like become a lawyer or I mean you can't become a cop but nobody should become a cop you become cops you can't become you know elect like whatever so I think that's like an interesting sort of restriction because I think it's probably people who have broken a few laws who've like learned something about how they work yeah I mean I it's not even like they've done something bad in the past it's more like the people who don't like them pretending to be offended by that thing or against that thing even though mm -hmm. they never publicly were like opposed to it yeah you know? or they participate like, in it in private like weed exactly yeah the moral yeah. compass just like keeps changing based on like who the person is uh yeah. yeah especially like with weed like when they like i don't know like i remember like back in the day when obama like they leaked pictures of him just like smoking weed or like him talking about smoking weed and i'm just like what like probably the only cool thing about him like what is the <laughs> like what's the issue here yeah. uh yeah so it's so weird just being like yeah like nitpicking and just like being like yeah this is bad I'm like, no, it's, it's not bad you just you just want it to be bad 
and even the Biden administration like let people go who they like had smoked weed. They just don't like. I would want more more stoners in the government. Yeah, a better place. To be fair, I think with Biden though, I think he legit uh, thinks that it's a bad thing because he's just old, and to him that's very offensive. Yeah, I feel like Kamala. I feel like Kamala has to have have done it many times. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I don't think Biden did. I don't think he's like cool enough to have done anything in his life. I think he's just like been like this for his whole life. Been this old, like since he was like twenty. Mm-hmm. That was like that was like his like personality, but yeah, calm, like I'm sure she she's she smoked weed. There's no way she hasn't smoked weed. I think she like arrested the people for smoking weed, then took their weed and then smoked it at home. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that was like her, which I think that is what those people do. But yeah, I don't know. I think like Biden was definitely like the kind of person who's like drank a lot and was like this is okay this is like being young and partied and stuff and then is like weed is a a hard 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 drug well it's it's you know it's it's fucked up because like he's like yeah like he got people out who smoked weed and he was like you know like there is no path for redemption kind of you know like Mm -hmm. it's not people who smoke weed it's people who smoked weed yeah. But at the same time, we're, we're supposed to be like, wow, what a great father. He forgave his son for all of like the drug use and, and all of that, which I'm, I'm sure like, yes, you, you should. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but like, it, why are you, why don't you like extend the same courtesy to other people? Mm-hmm. You know, like, why is it like, you can't have it both ways. Like you're like, oh, there's, there's an arc of like redemption for my son, but for other people, that's it you're gone you can't work with me you can't you can't associate with me I mean I think there's a lot of things that are like this where people feel differently when it's their family or friends versus like the general public and I think yeah. that he thinks he's like protecting people probably so, yeah from a drug that's like been legalized in so many states yeah and I think it's also a really interesting thing that it's legal in states but not legal federally which is like a whole you know legal mess but yeah i'm just i think the sex tape maybe was good for zach weiner i think it was good for him yeah Uh, a lot of the most of the replies are like very positive so Mm -hmm. there's that yeah and his like response was very like he didn't the only people who could criticize it were people who were just like how dare you like do this stuff like not people not anything about his character or like political yeah exactly persona yeah would you rather would you rather would you rather let's play a game of would you rather okay so this first one is kind of morbid so i'm sorry but uh in the u.s school shooting rates are really low during the pandemic but now things are opening up again and so we're starting to see those things happen more and I want to know, one, if you would rather die from COVID or from a school shooting, and would you rather have a, your child die from a school shooting or one of your parents die from COVID? <laughs> okay. Uh, I mean, to be honest, I would, I would go with a school shooting just because it feels like it's COVID takes a long time for you to die. And if I'm just going to die, I just want it to happen like that. If I had to pick between my my child and one of my parents what was the what was the what was that one like my child like dies from Ch- covid child dies from school shooting and a parent dies from covid i'm gonna say i i'm i'm i am sorry to my parents but i don't even have a child and just be by the way i treat my cats or not even children i'd probably pick my child yeah i, mean, I, I think just, it's a- yeah it's much more like protective relationship being a parent. Yeah, and I'm sure they'll understand because <laughs> they have children, you know, like, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I would also rather die from school shooting, but it's like, oh my God, the reason why, it's embarrassing. But I think um, at least I'd die a martyr, you know? The school shooting, I, they can become big media things. They're going to have my picture all over the news. I'll be important. COVID, I'm like one of millions. Yeah, I mean, I, I just I just don't want to die a painful death, I guess, for me. Yeah. It's just like, it, especially like 
knowing that you're gonna die, I think is very hard as well. Mm-hmm. You know, like it's just it's just one of those. I just yeah. So yeah, like if it's, if it's a sudden death, I'm just like it's obviously bad, but like still, mm-hmm. it is what it is. Yeah, and I'd also rather have one of my parents die from COVID, not because like, but it's also they're older, like they've lived more life. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like yeah, I feel like losing a child would just like uh, like destroy my life. <laughs> but in some ways, I feel like losing a child might be better, as in like you. It's not like they. I guess you're mourning what could have been the rest of their life, but it's not like you're mourning so much, so many years of experience and time with them. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. know. I feel like I've I, never I, had I a child like, die, so I don't know. <laughs> well, yeah, I feel like I feel like for parents, like you never want your child to die before you. That's the that's yeah. the thing, you know. Like it's just based on like how time works. You're supposed to go before your child. So you never have to experience that, basically. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. It just it just feel like it it would it would be worse, uh-huh. well, especially like from like a school shooting because like they just you know it's just especially like you have a person to blame for it, and it's just like seeing you have to see that person, and you have to hear about it over and over again, and then you have to live in a place where you're like, well, fuck you and your child, we're not gonna change anything about it. Yeah. So it's just it's not just losing the child; it's just the frustration that comes after it that will just like just like haunt you forever basically yeah it's not something you can just like look away from exactly yeah it's all in the media and everything where it's like covid Mm -hmm. is also there's not like a particular person and there's not like legislation that would change the way that i mean yes it's a virus so it's just yeah you know yeah i think also i'm curious about how because i know there are a lot of places where school was still open during covid because they're like you know not didn't want to walk down or whatever and it's like they could die from both at the same time yeah <laughs> yeah 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 i mean I, I mean i mean there were like no school shootings i think during the pandemic yeah uh but yeah but at the same time it's just it's it's bad that schools are the place where kids die the most i guess it's just like yeah i'm just like i'm like i understand now the uh, people who want to just homeschool mm-hmm like, I'm like, yeah. yeah, school just doesn't really protect kids by any means from anything. I think that's, there's so many, like, different reasons why people homeschool, though. And I think that it's sometimes, like, I know people who want to do that because they don't trust, like, the liberal education system to, like, not tell their kids that they're the problem. And then other people are like, school doesn't protect kids. So I think it's like if both sides are having an issue with it, it's like. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and I don't know. And schools don't even like pay teachers well as well. So do you have that? And yeah. it's just like it's a whole system. They're just like literally just like I feel like no one learns anything from it mm-hmm. uh, unless you go to some like really good school and you just like got lucky. It's just like a luck based system. And also, if you have money, obviously, then luck is not involved. You can just pay for a good school and then. Yeah just just have that I feel like my school experience that like I learned a lot as in like I did homework and I picked up skills and things like that but I didn't you know come out of it feeling like this was a supportive environment for me to like foster my own like desire to learn it was just like I kind of have to learn these things in order to like be a member of society because that's what people say oh exactly i mean you do it because like you feel like it's something that you you have to do it's just like kind of like uh you know it's a it's a race kind of thing where you're just you just have to finish all the levels you have to get like to the end and then you're like oh cool i did that thing you just feel like you have to do it which i feel like i felt with i mean i didn't feel it i felt with school but also like with college as well like now I'm like thinking about it. I'm like, I wish I didn't go to college. It's, it's, mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm doing nothing with my degree. It's just one of those things where I'm like, I, yes, like the college experience was nice. You want to live that. Um, but other than that, I'm like, what did I learn from college that I couldn't have learned myself? Yeah. Mm, I think nothing. to me, it was just like the structure of it is like the only yeah. thing that like, I, I, I have a hard time learning on my own just because I'm 
lazy and I don't wouldn't set myself deadlines or like things like that but actually there's so much unnecessary shit and like schools are honestly quite predatory towards like students who need the most help so yeah okay so my second one to rather chloe kardashian and tristan thompson have announced they're splitting up again so this i think they've done it like twice now maybe maybe it was just once but that once was a huge public fiasco um a lot of celebrities i've noticed have these like long drawn out on again off again relationships and they seem there are they're annoying to watch they're frustrating to watch so I can only imagine how frustrating it is to be in that. Um, I don't know if you would rather only be in that kind of relationship for the rest of your life or never have another romantic relationship ever again. You mean, you mean be in a relationship where you like constantly just like break up with someone? Yeah. If it was just, it was that or the other option, I would just like pick the other option. Like why would I, if, if it's a relationship like that, feels like it would just like lead to nothing and it's just... I feel like for them, they're just keeping it for the sake of God knows what. Uh, mm-hmm. Then I, I'd rather be just be alone, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Like why? Yeah, it doesn't seem like it is. It doesn't seem like it is. It's, it's like you know, there, there's nothing good coming out of it. it seems. Yeah. So, I think a lot um, of people are weirdly comforted by on again, off again relationships, and I yeah. personally am like, once, once we break up, there is no like little to no chance that we will ever hook up again or anything. Like I just am like, you got, I have to pretend like you died. Um, Yeah. So I don't understand it. I also think that like everything I want to achieve in life, I could still do without a romantic relationship. Whereas like having an on again, off again relationship like that would take up so much time that I think I would like not like so much mental space that I think I would not be able to actually do things that I wanted to do. Whereas like, I think, whatever i i wouldn't have like romance and like uh that kind of stuff but i would still have like friends and exactly, like, yeah. people to meet my like emotional needs and you know uh support systems and i could still like you know have a life without it doesn't it. seem good mentally too you know it just seems like it's something you'll just take so like because like you know it's not gonna go well every time yeah and And i think you're just like waiting for that moment so it's just you know i think for celebrities it's really like a lot of them feel like they have to kind of make it work in the public eye yeah exactly yeah and but i think i know a lot of people in real life who do it where it's just like they one it's like people some people love to make a mess just for fun two i think that it's like you're you did want to break up, but now you're feeling like lonely because you spend most of your time with them. And so now you're like, what do I do with that? And instead of like kind of being bearing the loneliness for a bit in, in order to actually move on, they just like go back and find that. Whereas like, I think for me, the loneliness thing exists, of course, like it exists for everyone. But I think I just like extra dive into like other shit when that kind of, when that happens. Well, yeah, no, I mean, like you said, they, they feel like they have to make it work. And it's just, it just feels like very, like, I don't know, it feels like very transactional because like you have to keep like a, this image of whatever people want from you. But like, yeah. you know, and I don't know, I just feel like when it comes to celebrities, I don't, I don't know if any of them have like actual, actual like meaningful relationship with like yeah. anyone that doesn't involve like their publicist or like, like the it's PR hard, person I'm being sure. like, yeah. 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 No, yeah. Of, of course it is. But it's just, you know, it's just one of those things where it's just like, even like when you hear like a breakup, I'm just like, I don't know if that does really like affect them as badly as it would affect like a, a normal person. But who knows? I, it's just, you only have the image that they give you. So like, there's nothing else you can like build on and just be like, Oh, they feel this way. Or like, Oh, they really love that person. Like, I have no idea. Really. I feel like honestly, it might hurt more because I, you're so used to being consumed in the public eye and not having people close to you who like actually know you. And that's like one person who might, this is like assuming it's like a real, real relationship, someone who might, and then they leave and it's like, that feels harder because you know like 
celebrities have friends who like leak their secrets all the time and like i think it's like probably hard yeah. to also just like people get people get messy during breakups like that whole calvin harris when calvin harris was like firing off to so after they broke up that was like a whole other that was a whole saga and i remember when justin bieber and selena gomez were like back and forth for so long like these were like our strong memories of my of my youth but well that makes sense yeah Okay, truth or dare? Uh, truth. What's a view that you held strongly at one point in your life that you now look back on with like shame or regret or like why would I ever think that? Fuck, I feel like I feel like a lot of stuff. I'm just trying to remember if there was like anything, anything specific, a view that I had. Fuck, I don't know. I, I think I, okay. A view, you know what? A view that I have and it's. A, not really a view I think it's like what my parents like raised me on I guess is is if I ever to be in like uh like marry someone or like be in a relationship with someone or whatever they uh they have to be like from the same country of origin as I am Mm -hmm. and they also have to practice the same religion I practice at the time and everything Mm -hmm. and that was just like something I really believed in and it was like yeah of course like it and whenever like someone who's like you know like does the opposite of that like from like you know like from where i'm I'm, uh, uh, like from like if if i have like a if i have someone who's like related to me who like would marry someone who's like not from libya or like be a relationship but they might be like oh why would why would you do that that just seems like a dumb thing to do just like and it's like to an extent just like disgraceful you know Mm -hmm. and now i'm just like and now i'm just like that doesn't even make sense to just even think that, like, what is, like, and and then I'm just like, oh, it's just my parents who were like, who who really believed in that because mm-hmm. it's just how they did it forever, and yeah, uh, and now I'm just like thinking it's like absolutely dumb, and I'm just it doesn't even make sense. I'm just like, no, you have to be with someone who's just like, uh, like because like no no one else can understand you, and like, mm-hmm. and then now you're like, that doesn't even make sense. You know, yeah. like I feel like now we, especially now, like we live in a time where like we're like very connected by like, like TV and social media and stuff. So I feel like generationally, we all like mostly have the same experiences in like how yeah. we think and everything. I mean, like yes, like it differs like depending on where you are. I'm sure like there was like other like uh, aspects to it, but for the most part, like. Like, even when I moved to the States, like, seven years ago, I feel like when I talk to people, like, who are, like, my age or, like, the same generation and stuff, we have so much in common, even though we lived in, like, two different, like, continents. Like, we're not even, like, the same. We're not even close in, uh, Mm -hmm. like, uh, distance. So, yeah, I guess that's the thing. Mm -hmm. I think that it's also, like, yeah, they might not have experienced the same things as you, but it's, like, come to a point where, like, anyone should be able to understand they should take the time to be able to understand like anything that someone they're like serious about has exactly to yeah deal with. also why would you why would it be like you know like why would you want to be with someone who had like the exact same experiences in life that you had like what is the fun of that to begin i think with? it's not fun i think it's just easy it is yeah i guess i guess it's definitely easy but i, I just feel like you don't really grow as a person by any means yeah. You just have yeah. this like limited worldview and like this is how everyone lives and then you just die eventually. What what like changed opened your mind to realizing that you didn't feel this way anymore? I think when I went like when I was in college, you know, like and I, and I think it has like to do with just like the just like the whole like social media and everything and you like and I started like and that's when I like I started traveling as well. Um mm-hmm. And, and just like, you know, like experiencing the world and just like being outside of where I was for like my, my most life, my, most of my life. And you just like make people, like make friends, like with people who are like not from the same country as you are to, or just don't even know where, where you're from really is. And, and you're like, yeah, people like, there are so many ways to live and it's mm-hmm. not, I am, it's, there's not only like one way as, as I believed when I was like growing up. Um, mm-hmm. 
and there's no right, like really like a, a right like a wrong way it's just like you you just do it the way it 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 feels to you and you know like as as you know they kept growing up and just like you know like you become like more and more open-minded and then you're like hey, it really doesn't matter i think those cultural things are really interesting because it's like it's really clear that people are taught a lot of their beliefs and not you know they're not like the general guidelines of society it's like someone said that one time and i'll just do it and like how many things that we don't question are like that exactly yeah and i'm yeah. sure like a lot of people like live like that still like even mm-hmm. with with and like not just like where i'm from like even like here in the states and everywhere else like you just have those people who are like this is i'm like this is how my father did it this is how my grandfather did it and this is how i'll do it as well and my kids mm-hmm. will be the same way I was like, well, I guess if that works for you, like enjoy that. But that sounds so boring to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Did you ever watch Indian matchmaking? I I watched some of it, yes, and it's very it's a lot of it is like very relatable. Like I I, I understand that experience. Obviously, like just like. It, nothing happened to me, but just like seeing like other people in my family, like whether like women or men just being like, you know, arranged marriage and just like having that person, like an elder in the family, just being like, nah, I'll take care of this. Yeah. It's also like so many people are like looking to reproduce their parents' relationship in this way. And their parents are like a part of it, which like, I, I think it's just a more like a less individualistic culture, but I think it's like, I think I've always thought the concept of even white people do this. Like I want to find a partner just like my dad or whatever. I don't, I don't I'm, like, that's not, you don't want the person you're with to be your parent, your parent. Like, that's not healthy. Exactly. Yeah. And sometimes it's not even a happy, like, I mean, I'm sure. Yeah. Some people like have parents of like, who are like in happy relationships and they're fine. But like, there are some people who are just like, I your parents are just putting a show and I'm not mm-hmm. sure if they like still like one another, uh, yeah. but they still want you to do that because that's how they did it. And they think that it's okay not to just like fully like someone because I'm like, yeah, I've been with your dad for 30 years and I don't like him that much. We just make it work. And it's just like, mm-hmm. Oh, so you're missing out and you want me to miss out as well. It's just, it, that's not how life works. They also think they're doing the noble thing. I think so. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. One hundred percent. Okay. I'll have so, I'll have something for I have something for you. So truth or dare. I'll start with the dare. Oh, a dare. Okay. Okay. Yes. Dare. Uh, read me your uh, last Google searches. Um, <laughs> Kevin Hart on cancel culture. Pulse nightclub day. Dot mov into MP4. Karen film. Current events. Headlines of the week. <laughs> so okay so it's, 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 not it's mostly podcast research yeah 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 I mean, there's some yeah okay some of random ones it's not that, that is, fun that's really funny because like yesterday i literally googled i looked up uh okay funny i i literally have my first google search says karen uh, <laughs> so and then and then literally it just says uh pop culture headlines really cool stuff yeah I'm not even sure what I'm looking at I don't know if my google searches are ever really that interesting because I feel like all the interesting stuff I do on my phone which all the tabs are private browser yeah yeah that is right yeah I don't really I only do work stuff on my laptop for the most part so like most of it is just so boring Mm -hmm. it's just technical shit I don't it's business business on my computer and pleasure on my phone so exactly yeah my phone is like a lot of dumb shit they're just yeah. like just like do do i have this one disease because i'm feeling this way and it's just a lot of you know a lot of the shit or whatever stuff i'm googling i am like yeah i think i have like on my phone just like billy eilish racist video yeah what was the deal with that when her boyfriend was racist I think when she was like 13 years old, she like said like uh, like was si- like singing along with like a Taylor the Creator song, and she it was like an, an anti Asian slur in it, and she like kind of like, was just like repeating the lyrics, and mm-hmm. yeah, that was 
I mean, that was that, was that and someone found it and put it out, which is crazy to me because I'm like, why is there a, a video from like, I don't know how many years ago on the internet? Like, do you guys not know how to delete videos? There are people also who definitely dedicate like all their time to like finding shit on people. Like this, the same thing with the BDSM video and it's like, what are you getting out of it? It doesn't make any sense because like if you're selling it to like, you know, like like a news agency or something, you're making money out of it. Then you sure, I guess it makes sense mm-hmm. if there's like a monetary like value. But like some people are just like, you know, like just, you know, just have a Twitter account and that's all they do. I'm just like, I don't know if that is fun. Like, I don't even know who you are. I don't think it's fun. I also think it's like totally different than like things happening in the present. Like to to post a video, like when to- when Peng Dang posted that video of Tony Hinchcliffe, like calling him into Asian slurs, like that was at least had happened like the same week. And it was, yeah. he was posting it to like spread some sort of awareness, not to like publicly shame the guy. So, you know, and also like he was, it was, it was like, it was the cultural standard of today, not the cultural standard of 10 years ago also. Exactly, so, yeah. I think. Yeah, like, I guess it's some people, that's how they give meaning to their existence, to be honest. It's just, there's nothing else going on for them. Like, mm-hmm. I just can't imagine spending my time doing that. I'm just like, I have better things to do. Yeah, okay, truth or dare. Uh, truth. Is there anything where, like, before you came to the U.S., you thought, was like a joke about America, but it actually turned out to be real. I mean, how dumb some people in the U.S. are is <laughs> very accurate. I 100% believe that is true now. And um, just like how, like, I don't know. I just feel like, I think a lot of like those like jokes, I guess, have to do with ignorance, honestly. Like every everything I believe that was like a joke about the U.S. That, like turns out to be true was like, Yes. Also, like, honestly, like, uh, like how, I guess, just like how a lot of people in the U.S. like do not care about anyone else but themselves, just like they, this whole like in, individualistic trait mm. uh, that you like, I, I like, I feel like I used to hear from people like not even as a joke, as just like a stereotype, I guess. Mm. Um, but you're like, oh, I don't think that's true. And then you like move here and I'm like, oh, wow, this is I mean, like not everyone, obviously, but like, like a big part of the population like oh you really do not give a fuck about anyone else huh mm-hmm. it's, it is it is just you and i think that was like that belief was like amplified during the pandemic i was just like my god yeah. like you do not care that there people are dying yeah the idea it does of, like, not serve you individual freedoms yeah mm-hmm. and i mean exactly and i'm sure like you like I don't know, like, where I grew up, it's, like, it's, I mean, yes, it's, it wasn't great, but, like, it was, like, very community-based, you know? And I'm and and I'm sure, like, it's the same thing with, like, you know, like, Indian culture, where, like, you just, like, you know, like, you have the family, and you, like, have the extended family, and you mm-hmm. have all of that. And even though, yes, it can be, feel, like, very oppressive at some points, where it's just, like, them getting into your business all the fucking time. Mm-hmm. But there's also that part where you're, like, you know, like, if you ever, like, were, like, in extreme need for something, you will mm-hmm. have someone, like, you can rely on. Like, they will not, they will just not let you, they're not going to, like, let something bad happen to you or just, like, yeah, but, you know, but, like, you, you, you always know that you will have someone to rely on if you're, like, uh, they will not let you just, like, go and just, like, be, like, not have a house or like be houseless or something, which is something that just like still like shocks me to this day. Uh, like, and I mean, I knew that was something in the US that happens, you know, like you have like a lot of like people like were like homeless and stuff, which is like heartbreaking. But, and I think a lot of it has to do with the uh, like individual, like people just being trying to be individuals and like not, it's not a, it's not a community based society. So it's just like, to a lot of people just like, yeah, this sucks, but like, these people made these choices and that's where they are now. And I am a good person and I avoided that. And while like where I come from, it's more like, no, nah, yeah, we're not going to let that happen. No matter what this person and what the choices they make or like whatever, who cares? We'll have to find them somewhere to be. Mm-hmm. I think that's also like reminiscent of what you were saying about like 
Biden forgiving his son, but like lot like wanting to lock up all these other people. Cause yeah. it's like, I think there's also like, there's room for individualism within like helping your community. Like that's also the thing that's strange is because a lot of the people who really don't care about the people are also the same people who really try to limit self-expression in a lot of ways and like yeah. being who you are, which is like a tenet of, which is like one of the really nice things about American individualism. I feel is that like, yeah, you can't, you have the freedom to be whoever you are and not like what the, your role is in, in society. Of course. Yeah. Of but course, yeah. I think it's interesting that like the p- same people who are opposed to helping others are also opposed to like people just, it's like a strange thing. Cause those are like two like ideologies like clashing, but I don't think anything is ever like consistent with those kinds of people. Exactly. Yeah. And I, I think, I think, yes, like you, you want to be your own person and stuff like that. And that's like something I enjoy about being here. Cause like I, like, like I don't, I'm not with my family anymore. Like, it's, like I do miss my family and everything, but I enjoy my own like personal freedom mm-hmm. and just like being able to do whatever I want without them like weighing in on everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think like it's just like I feel like there's this line where you just like sometimes like it turns from like just being expressing yourself and being an individual, or just like becomes like borderline to like just like like you become like very selfish and like there's sh- yeah that line should be like uh, like you should like know when you're like stepping into that like selfishness part because like you know like a lot of things like are like labeled as like you know like you know it's my life I'm taking care of myself and like stuff like that and I'm like you okay yes you can do that but like also it is okay to care about other people as well Mm -hmm. it shouldn't and there shouldn't be like something in return for doing that it's just yeah I feel like at, like if we're all doing well, you also will be doing better. So like I feel like that mentality is lacking, where like the health of the like the whole group is like also will reflect on the individual, and people are just like, no, it's just me. If I'm doing well, I am doing well. I don't care about other people. I'm like no, it should be everyone because it's just that's how it works. I also don't get like all the like really rich people would would have every single need of theirs that they have met now still met can still have those need, all those things met and have money left over and everyone mm-hmm. can be fed and housed. It's not a, a threat that they think it is, you know, but I think it's like yeah. wanting to feel morally superior. Well, yeah, because like for a lot of these people, they think that they've made those, cho- made those choices and they are better people because mm-hmm. of those choices. And everyone who doesn't lead the same life has made the wrong choices and mm-hmm. that should be on them to fix it. And they're like, no, it's not. Even even for people who literally did not work for that money. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Like, I'm like, did you make the choice to be born to, into a rich family? I'm just like, that wasn't that wasn't a choice. You just, yeah. you, you just got lucky. Yeah. And they're like, well, I, my father worked his, like, I don't know. It's very, it's very yeah. weird. Yeah, exactly. Um, a lot of people who make way less money work a lot harder than a lot of people make so much money so 100 percent. the the jobs i had were paid me the least amount of money is the jobs i've worked the harder doing like i work less than i've used in the past Mm -hmm. and now i'm like i'm making more than i used to even though i'm doing like way less work well not just like way less work work that i enjoy versus Mm -hmm. like work that i hated and i had no time to do anything else and i also made almost no money so mm-hmm. it's just, I'm just like that whole like working hard mentality doesn't make any sense to me because I'm like, I believe people who work in customer service work way harder than I do. I think it's also like you definitely want to have more superiority because um, if you believe like everyone can work, work hard and out like pull themselves up by the bootstraps, et cetera, like then none of the things that you rely on would get done, like mm-hmm. services that you rely on up to people doing for you if you still feel like that's morally inferior to you if everyone just did that and it worked that way like you still want people working those jobs to be poor so that you can of feel course, like yeah. you know yeah yeah absolutely yeah because like it's just like like i said earlier just like 
there has to be people doing worse than you are so you you'll be doing well and it's just like it's such a weird mentality to have just like like there has to be suffering in order for people to other people to feel good like instead of just being like how about like some people like no one is like how about everyone does well and then there are other people who do more well mm-hmm. like no no some people yeah. have to fucking suffer it has yeah. to be bad because i'm like i guess feel good you can still have like the richest people like everyone doesn't need to make the exact same amount of money but it's like what does it hurt you that you're you have like a little more a little more money than than the the next I don't know. Like the people at the no bottom one will be can mad at you. Themselves. No one will be mad at your money, your vast wealth. If people like had healthcare and had like food to eat, like three meals a day, and like like had like good transportation and like could take vacations and a time off, people will just be like just like busy living their lives. But like now you're just like people are suffering, so I'm like, of course people are mad at you. Like why mm-hmm. want, wouldn't they be? Truth or dare me. Oh, okay. Um, oh, yes. True. Okay, truth or dare. We'll do truth this time. Okay, how long have you been doing stand-up? Or uh, comedy in general? Okay. For, uh, that's how long I've been doing uh, stand-up. I've been doing comedy since I was, like, 14. I did improv in high school and, like, sketch and improv in college. Okay, so have you ever, like, had a joke, like, in your, like, your, your material or whatever in the past that you look back at now and you think it is extremely embarrassing that you thought that was funny? Um, I'm sure I have those things. I feel like I repressed them. I'm trying to think of like, you know, I have... Like it doesn't have to be something bad or cancelable or like something like yeah. that. Like like if you go back and watch your first set or whatever and you're like, oh God, why did why did you think this was funny? I have this joke about like how my Apple Watch was my most toxic relationship and how it's like body shaming me and whatever it just like it's fine it's a joke it just felt it was like so not about anything oh yeah um I have that joke the one where I stopped I wanted to fuck Tommy Lair and I I'm not like I, I thought it was my <laughs> joke I just it's embarrassing I've definitely done some stuff on zoom shows that I feel like has not come across like I've been wanting to tell a joke a, a kind of joke and I, I mm-hmm. try to write it and it's not what I think it is and it yeah. comes up a lot of times like when I think a joke is like edgy or something also I over explain the context which can make it less acceptable than it just saying it outright yeah 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 no I get it I mean like I I still like watch like my like a lot of like my material like when I first started I'm just like it, like not nothing was bad like nothing was like offensive or anything it's just like like, ew, what is, this is not good at all. Like, and, it, and it's so funny because, like, at a time, like, I remember doing it and being like, this is good. Mm-hmm. This is amazing. Like, I am the next big thing. And now I'm just like, I just embarrassing. Time to unlist this on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, like, the natural course of things, though. It's, like, everything yeah, you course, do is yeah. embarrassing to you in the future. Of course. No, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, okay, well, let's do one last round. Okay. Truth or dare? I'll do truth again. Okay, wow. No dares yeah. for you. Um, let's see. Who is someone in, like, the comedy world or something that you initially found to be annoying or something and now have have grown to like? I don't think there's... Honestly, I think it's only the opposite, to be honest. Okay, then tell me one of the opposites. <laughs> like, 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 it's like comedians who I thought was like, were like good and like very funny. And then like now I'm just like, Ugh. like, I mean, like Kevin Hart is, is an example. I feel like when I first started doing comedy, like when I like got first interested in comedy, you like you watch like his early stuff. I'm like, oh my God, this is so good. So funny. Mm-hmm. And then I go like like I go and watch it like watch it now and I'm just like why did I think this is good like mm-hmm. like nothing about this is really funny it's just like him just like he's just like jumping around like just like you know like just saying <laughs> stuff out like he's just like yelling stuff out loud and yeah. it's just the same bit over and over again really uh, about him just like being scared of everything or whatever and like just doing weird impressions of like mm-hmm. his his parents or whatnot. Uh, 
so I feel like a lot of those comedians like who are like had like international appeal. I would say, like I'd go and watch them now. I'm just like, God damn it, this sucks. I mean, like anyone who can appeal to everyone is definitely not having that much nuance in what they're saying. One hundred percent. Yeah, it's a lot of like, it's because it's the same thing too. It's just like it's it's like just like very general material. A lot of accents. A lot of a lot of impressions. And maybe they like sing or something. Yeah. And everyone was just like, oh my God, this is good. I like comedy like this. And and it's just like, yeah, I guess. I mean, I, I guess this works in Vegas or something. Or it's just like people who have never seen comedy before. Uh, like yeah, and I think and most like that. consumers of comedy aren't comedians too, you know? Like, so I think you look at it with different lens when you actually have to, when you actually do the writing. Because when you don't, I think it's like much easier to be impressed yeah exactly exactly yeah it's just like especially like doing it now and i've been doing it for a few years and stuff you can just tell them like this is doesn't even like follow the structure of a joke you really Mm -hmm. just had no premise and then you made a lot of noises and people were like this is fuck incredible amazing stuff Mm -hmm. and it's like no this is this is bad but i mean good for you i guess you're making a lot of money so I mean, what uh, what do I know? Uh, yeah, I'll, I have one more thing, and it has to be a truth because it's the only okay. thing I have left. Uh, but what is something that you pretended to care about or like for so long only to make someone else happy, even though you secretly hated that thing? Mm, I haven't done much of that in my life. If anything, I have pretended to hate things that I actually like just to spite people. But... <laughs> but... <laughs> I'm trying to think maybe like video games or like certain TV shows. Yeah. I don't think anything big though. And it's like a fake, a fake answer, but yeah, I don't think I like do that that much. I, I feel like I've only done that. Maybe like the, the, the only example I can think of is that I, I have, I have this, uh, this, my, my credit card, it has the, the Minnesota Vikings on it for some reason. It was a mistake. And I don't watch football at all. Uh, but there was this bagel place next to my place where uh, I paid with my card once. And turns out the guy is from there. He's from Minnesota and he just loves the Vikings. <laughs> and I pretended to like football for like a whole year because every time I go there, it would just give me like free bagel. So every time like the Vikings like play or something, I'll just like look it up and see like the score and stuff. So just so I could talk to him about it for like a second. And then just get my free bagels and, and, and go out. And that was like probably like the longest like lie I've ever lived. But it made him happy. So I guess we both won. I think those kind of situations, so it's like so innocuous and it's kind of fun to play along. Exactly. I'm like, yeah, why not, man? Just, just, just to make you happy. I mean, I'm sure mm-hmm. no one cares about the Vikings here. So I'll be that person. <laughs> That's funny that your car just had the Vikings on it. Well, yeah, it still anyway, has for some reason. Yeah. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me. Um, of you, course. If you want to leave the listeners any last parting words, be my guest. Uh, just, yeah, I guess just follow me on Twitter and uh, it's at Mohana Del Shaky. And, uh, you know, uh, be nice to me always or I'll block you. Yeah, you're ruthless on there. <laughs> I have to. Thank you all so much for listening. See you next time. Pillow Fight is a production by me, Yamini Nambimadam, with music by Greer Baxter.